American Sniper, starring Bradley Cooper and directed by Clint Eastwood, has made more box office history. It took in nearly $32 million over Super Bowl weekend, topping the record for a movie's earnings over that weekend. Wow. The Best Picture nominee that stars Bradley, directed by Clint Eastwood, has raked in $249 million domestically. Most of America rarely thought about a specific facet of war until the movie American Sniper hit screens across the nation and started a discourse that has ranged from elevating the soldier in question to a national hero to slamming him as nothing more than psychotic and racist. There has to be some truth in between and can only be told by one who has been there. He's a former 3rd Ranger Battalion sniper, the first African-American to serve in that unit, credited with 33 kills in only three and a half months on the battlefield in Afghanistan. And his book is a riveting account of that time, the Reaper, autobiography of one of the deadliest special op snipers, Nicholas Irving. Nick, thanks so much for joining us today, and we thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. There are so many people out there, you've heard them all, and I mentioned a few, who look back at what Chris Kyle did. They've called him a racist, a psychotic killer, who went on killing sprees. When you hear things like this, people will look at you and say, are you a killer? Do you enjoy killing? That has got to grate at you. Oh, it definitely does. Um, it, do I enjoy killing, uh, killing people? No, I don't. I wasn't out there being a mass murderer or a racist or anything like that. It was just a job, and it's something that I signed up for, and my job was to protect American uh, U.S. troops and allied troops as well as the, you know, the civilians on the ground from, uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. At no point in time did I go on any killing sprees. If I you know, killed someone, it was to protect uh, my own. What do you think then when you hear people say things like that? And I will have to tell you that I come from a military family, so I, I have a, a, a preponderance, if you will, to go in favor of the military. My dad was in the service as well. But when people say things like this, do you not wish they'd slap on a pair of boots, put a gun in their hand, and maybe take them overseas and see what reality is? I'll be willing to pay for the ticket. Um, I still have all my old gear as well. Um, when I think, when I, when I hear people say things like that, I, I look at the... Uh, uh, what, what our enemy does and they're not bringing you know the enemy into this whole topic as far as uh, these are the same guys who chop off kids heads and rape the women uh, they're not bringing that up but those are the true savages and if I drop a guy um, because I'm you know witnessing something like that happen I don't see how I'm the killer I think I'm more of a, a passionate guy at that point how do you though and people are gonna always ask this you look through the crosshairs you see somebody you know and sometimes you do see their eyes and you know you are going to kill them how do you separate yourself from that and then not letting yourself become I don't want to use the word psycho but letting yourself become something different when you are having to do that on a day-to-day -day basis uh, it, it's just a job and there was plenty of times where I looked at a guy's face and uh, I could see his expression uh, when I just shot his friend who was next to him before I took that guy out. It was nothing, uh, I never put myself into a, it, it was not personal. It was more or less a, just a job and that guy was a target that needed to, uh, to go away. Um, mm. I never really thought too much in depth about it. Um, I started, uh, the first person I ever killed was, uh, I was 18 years old in Iraq. So I really, I had already separated myself from the, the killing aspect of it. Do you regret any of it? No, I don't. I don't even, uh, I don't think about it at all. Uh, the first kill I ever had, I had a pretty bad dream about it, but um, the only thing I do regret was not being able to save one of my best friends who uh, saved me from an enemy sniper. Um, he died five minutes after he saved my life and my reconnaissance team. I got about a minute here before we take a break, come back and talk about this a little bit more, but why is it that liberals, specifically, such as Michael Moore and others, but those on the left, are the ones that are really attacking away at this film and using names such as racist and psychotic. They just don't get it. Um, uh, that's what, you know, all I can say, they just don't get it. They don't understand. And I think they're also using that movie as a platform to boost their career. Uh, they, they have dying careers like Michael Moore, um, Seth Rogen, and those guys. Their careers are, you know, they're, they're nothing at this point. So they wanted to, you know, create some type of controversy to get them back in the limelight. Have any, have any of these people who have said any of these things, have they reached out to you, tried to interview you, talked to you, said anything, tweeted anything? No, they haven't. Um, if it does come to that point, I'd like it to be a face-to-face -face type of meeting. A face-to-face -face type of meeting basically to then try and tell them to their face what it was like, try and make them understand what it was like, or perhaps something more? Not just make them understand, it's just that uh, uh, these cowards who hide behind the keyboard, that's all they are. They hide behind the keyboard and, and type away. 
I've never seen one of these guys talk to uh, one of us, or Chris Kyle's wife, or his family, or his children. That's All a right. coward. Well, we're going to talk to you a little bit more. Stand by, if you will, please, because next up, returning home, the truth, what it is like to come home after tours in Afghanistan and being an American sniper. Much, ro much more from former Special Forces sniper Nicholas Irving, the author of Reaper, when we return. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, former 3rd Ranger Battalion sniper, served his country with distinction in Afghanistan, also author of The Reaper, autobiography of one of the deadliest special ops snipers, Nicholas Irving. Nick, when you're overseas and when you're dealing with your fellow soldiers and you look at the American foreign policy, you are in the middle of war, you are watching these people trying to take your life, you're getting an idea of what it's like. Do you and the rest of the soldiers look at yourselves and go, we just couldn't screw it up more than the way we have it right now? I would say so. I think, um, especially when they started to change the uh, rules of engagement. When I was in Iraq in 2005, six, and seven, um, it was a completely different, uh, different battlefield at that point. Uh, now I think, right now at this point, we have our hands tied behind our back. And um, I want to say, just last year, uh, I got a phone call from one of my my old spotter, Mike, and um, 30 Rangers wounded on an objective due to the ROE. So now, it's actually, it's really hurt us. When, when the commanders on the ground then bring this to the attention of the people in Washington, of the ones making the decision, and tell them your decisions are helping to kill our guys here, what's the answer you get back? Work around it, pretty much. Um, adapt and overcome. Uh, at, that, at this point in time, it's all about building their nation and, and helping the people, but that's not our mission set. Is, is uh, that, wait a minute, is that the one thing that you guys as soldiers really would like to just toss out and let's get rid of it once and for all, this whole nation building? Your job, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to speak out of turn, put words in your mouth, but your job is not to build a nation. Your job is to take out the bad guy, right? Exactly. That's 100% correct. Uh, the entire, all the training we went through had nothing, you know, to deal with building a nation. Uh, we were taught how to be really good shooters and work under stress and you know, eliminate targets. Um, that's our sole purpose in life, and it, it sounds blunt, but our purpose in life is, especially being a Ranger Battalion, is, is just to kill people. And they put us in pretty uh, heavy environments, hostile environments, to just, you know, take out the, uh, the bad guy. At no point in time do we shake hands and hand out Jolly Ranchers. At, <laughs> that's a really good way to put it, too. At what point do you guys start to say that it's the president's? It goes to the very highest level, that the commander-in-chief is the one who is simply making bad choices and is not listening to the people around him. Uh, we started talking about that, uh, I think, as soon as he was elected. Um, things started to change. Our uh, special operation budgets got cut. Um, guys were docked some pay. It was, uh, we started talking about how bad it was getting as soon as he was uh, elected and then re-elected as well. What's life like for you now? Uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, I have two German Shepherds. I'm surprised they're not in here right now, but uh, they're, uh, they keep me pretty busy. And I, you know, uh, teach people how to shoot long range precision and uh, just pretty much working on that right now. What about coming back home? Because mm -hmm. the Veterans Administration has, in many people's opinion, done an absolutely despicable job in mm -hmm. caring for the veterans when they come home. Did you go through that and how do you feel you were treated? Yes, I did go through that. I went through, uh, after I lost my best friend overseas in 2009, I struggled with, uh, I guess, survivor's guilt at that point. So I drank myself to, you know, until I was numb and I just didn't feel pain anymore. And it, it got to the point where I knew I needed help. Uh, you know, a lot of people contacted me about it. And it took around, I want to say almost nine, nine months before I actually had a chance to talk to somebody. So it was, uh, it was a nine-month wait of... I guess dealing with it on my own at that point. I never used to talk about, you know, the things I did overseas and uh, writing the book. I did that in the meantime. I self-published that book and it was like a therapy, I guess, before it got picked up by uh, St. Martin's. Did you ever, when you came home in the depression, the alcohol, did you ever come to a point where you thought about taking your life? Oh, yeah, I did a few times. Um, it got to that point. Uh, I purchased a German Shepherd, she's a female, and I think that's when uh, I guess I kind of started to get emotion back. Or not emotion, I just, uh, I'm not the type of guy who likes to hug and, you know, be around the lovey dovey type thing, but I think she brought that back out of me. But there was a few times where I hit rock bottom and thought that that was it. I got about 30 seconds left. The book itself, therapy for you, has it helped you excise some of the demons? 
Oh, definitely. It uh, it got a lot of emotion out. Emotion that I've you know kept in for since 2005, and finally writing that book, it all came out. So it took about two years to write. It was a long process of reliving memories and and getting you know the story correct. Well, Nicholas, I have to tell you, there's a lot of people in America who certainly appreciate the job that you and the other soldiers do. You put your lives on the line for us here. You do your job, and you do it to the best of your ability. I have not had a chance to read the book yet, but I am really looking forward to it. We, again, thank you for your service, and I hope we get a chance to talk again. Oh, definitely. Thank you. All right, take care. Once again, the book is called The Reaper, autobiography of one of the deadliest special op snipers, and the author is Nicholas Irving. By the way, do not miss your chance to read the whole story of Chris Kyle, he was the most lethal sniper in American history and did his job. You want to learn about the real Chris Kyle? This is it, the number one bestseller for only the cost of shipping. Now go to Newsmax.com slash sniper. That's Newsmax.com slash sniper. Get a copy of the book. Understand what you did not see in the movie and learn about the real Chris Kyle and the real job that they do overseas. All right, coming up next, American kids on food stamps and why there are still so many needing this assistance. That and more coming up right here on Midpoint. <laughs>